Last year at this time, Michigan fans felt like finally maybe the transfer portal was working for the Wolverines compared to against. But here we are a year later, and that maybe isn't exactly the type of sentiment between that and recruiting that people have. Well, I want to discuss some of that. Some of it might be founded, certainly. Some of it is unfounded. There's a little bit of balance to it. So we're going to try to bring that to the conversation on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Wednesday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. And uh, I was trying to delay this episode a little bit because... Uh, Got stupid political text messages coming in. That's not why. I just <laughs> got an interruption, and I was like, what is with that? Uh, that time of season. Tis the season. Um, I tried to delay it because Javier Suggs, JVR, however you say his name, uh, is deciding his school of choice today. I didn't want this show to be outdated. I decided, because he announced 7.30, it's currently 6.50. I'm not waiting. <laughs> so, uh, certainly he is a target. Uh, I just didn't want to make it uh, too outdated. He's choosing probably between Michigan and LSU. Maybe Kentucky's in the picture there too, but um, he's a Grand Valley State guy. But there are certainly some targets that Michigan is going after. Not all completely at positions that I would say are of absolute need. Like defensive tackle isn't a place that I'd say like, yeah, they really need to get a transfer there. That said, I advocated for CJ West. Ends up at Indiana. Advocated for the five-star commitment whose name eludes me, who uh, committed to Purdue. He ended up moving up his uh, reclassifying and is now a 2024, and Purdue somehow has a five-star and Michigan does not. Um, but uh, those, that's a little bit more a position to need, the, uh, the cornerback, than the defensive tackle, right? But uh, certainly there are some guys that they are looking at that uh, aren't all at high-end positions of need. Amir Hall is a guy who is at a position in need, and he uh, was announced to be visiting Michigan uh, here sometime soon. I don't know that there was a date associated with it, but if you don't know who that is, it's because he played at the FCS level. He played at Albany last year. He played at Richmond before that. He was a uh, FCS All-American cornerback. Last year, he had five interceptions and 15 pass breakups. That's insane. That's certainly the type of guy you want to add. And I know people are going to sit there and look at it and say like, LOL, Michigan. But Michigan's done really well when it comes to transfer portal guys, especially in the last couple of years. Like, yeah, not all of them have completely worked out. Like Dalen Baldwin, I thought, was going to be the number one receiver for Michigan when he arrived. Didn't end up happening, right? Uh, had, had his moments, but then had his not so good moments. But for the most part, it feels like all the transfers, like you look at the last year, the transfer portals they brought in, uh, transfer portal players they brought in uh, just about everybody was just absolutely phenomenal right like who, who wasn't you know the ones that weren't maybe phenomenal it's like a miles hinton who's back for another year and should be phenomenal like ernest houseman was very good coming off the bench but i you know maybe you don't look at him as being phenomenal but certainly he's you, you expect him to make that junior colson sophomore to junior year jump especially now that he's going to be a starter so that they've gotten really good value from the transfer portal, and they're, but they're targeting names that aren't necessarily the biggest out there. Now, they got their two that they really wanted early, obviously, in Josh Preeb and Jay Sean Barham. Barham, again, they will, they'll tell anyone who will listen, they look at him as a first-round linebacker talent. They feel like they got a dude. So that's great. They get Amarian Walker back from the transfer portal. They got Dominic Zavada. They got C.J. Charleston. These are good ads. If you don't know who Dominic Zavada is, he's the kicker from uh, see, uh, Arkansas State. It took me a second there. You, you know my memory is not where it was. If you, if, you were, if you follow this show when it first started in 2018, compared to now, it's, it's, the memory is a complete, I'm a completely different person. Not always in a good way. Um, but um, there, there are some targets that they are looking at that I feel like are higher caliber. But again, it's it's... I think part of it is just kind of the transition that you go through when you go, you know, you, you, you go through the whole national championship run, 
that puts you at a later place than a lot of others. Then you change your coach three weeks after that. That puts you in a later place than a lot of others. You have to assemble a staff. You don't get it really set until uh, April. That puts you behind a lot of others. Uh, so they don't have the stability. NIL is, yes, it's still a work in progress. And that's kind of where I am disappointed to some degree. Because, and I think that they're doing a great job at Champion Circle, Valiant, uh, State and Maine, all of those. They are doing a great job. I've been in those, like I've said before, I've been in those uh, pitch conferences, right? Those uh, gatherings with uh, donors and stuff like that. Uh, I think that they do an incredible job. I've been there. I've been to the golf outing. It's, those are huge events. But there is also Michigan doing things the Michigan way. And I, no, they're not going to digress from that. And uh, as Steve Dace had kind of pointed out on Twitter earlier today, that's a self-inhibitor. But yes, that's true. But it's just like academic self-inhibitor. Michigan has a lot of self-inhibitors. But I, the reason I don't have as much of a problem with that is because as annoying as that might be, it is a, if you want to be the leaders and best, you have to continue to be the leaders and best. Now, it's not necessarily going to, put you in the upper echelon of what college football is today. But as of right now, Michigan is the reigning national champion. And it certainly, you know, two, three years ago, no one was thinking a playoff was even in the cards, given where that team was. If you would have said to someone at this point in time in 2021, Michigan is going to go to the college football playoff for three straight years, and they're going to win the national championship and, uh, on the third one. Not, I, I would say there are very few of you that would have believed that. So with that in mind, you hope that the strategy still kind of works. Now with the transfer portal, we'll go over some of the names that uh, I've got a list here from Pete Nacko. So I've mentioned uh, Amir Hall uh, from Albany uh, as being a target. Uh, obviously, Javier Suggs is going to uh, have uh, made his decision by the time that this podcast posts on any platform. So I can't really speak about him. Uh, but we'll talk about some of the targets and then just kind of what they should do and kind of what I think they do have right. We'll get we'll get to the more balanced part here in just a moment. Before we do that, passion, drive and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. We're going to continue on here in just a moment, but when you're hiring uh, for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. So you've got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the tool to help you find the right professionals for your team faster as well as for free. Dirt free. Dirt free? That's not a thing, but anyway. <laughs> LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you find hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is also constantly finding new ways to help make the process easier. They even just launched a new feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process just that better, that much better. <laughs> English language eludes me today. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Shout out to uh, Marty, uh, a watcher slash listener who uh, ran into for the second time here on the streets of Fenton, walking uh, walking Zuri, enjoying the uh, the lovely weather, trying to uh, trying to lose the fifty pounds that we've put on in the last uh, four years. Yeah, the pandemic's been that tough. Fifty pounds. Well, not quite fifty, like forty, but I want to lose fifty. 
that's uh that's not fun um but uh and then Zuri, as I get up to come in to do this show, is like, we're going for a while. Like, we're, we just went for six miles and got, just got home like an hour ago. Like, come on. This dog just wants to go and see all the bunnies and the puppies and all of that. Um, all right. So Michigan's got a, a number of targets that it's looking at. Uh, obviously, it, it's missed out on, like I mentioned, CJ West. It missed out on Terrence Brooks, who... Uh, was uh, scheduled to visit Michigan. He's the Texas cornerback, and he ends up committing to Illinois uh, before he even made it to Ann Arbor. Uh, that probably tells you he ma- they made some kind of offer. And here's the thing. This is what I was thinking about earlier today about it, is like it, you might sit there and say, it's sad that Michigan can't even get this guy over Illinois. But when money comes into play in the form of NIL, if you're in Illinois – you need that type of guy who you sit there and say, I need to build my defense around him more than Michigan needs a guy that you're going to say like, well, we've got Will Johnson on one side. Let's try to get this guy to be on the other side. You, if you're Illinois, you're going to go all out more so. Plus, Michigan has to retain players more so than in Illinois. So not, not only do the rich get richer in some cases, like we saw with like an Ohio State this year, some of the schools that are kind of the lower tier, like Illinois is, this probably is not going to come back to bite me, but Illinois is probably not challenging to be in the college football playoff anytime soon, even with it expanded. With the conference expansion, that kind of precludes the Illinois of the world, the Northwesterns, the Indianas, the Purdue's. Like, yeah, there's a chance if everything goes perfect and their schedule is easy that they can backdoor their way in, but it's highly unlikely. But Looking at some of these guys here that um, Pete Nackos, who does an incredible job nationally for uh, on three, uh, he lists uh, he and Steve Wiltfong, who is, again, one of the reasons he's one of the people I'm in this business. So hats off to Steve as always. Uh, Michigan State safety, Jaden Mangum, Sacramento State uh, safety, Cameron Boussard. They're clearly looking at safety talent. Lou, uh, Louisville safety, Wes Wel- uh, Walker. Wow, that was a slip there. Wesley Walker. Um Buffalo offensive lineman Isaiah Wright, good name, <laughs> and Javier Suggs from Grand Valley State. So um, it's kind of interesting because there aren't those wide receivers, but it's, I think, in part, you know, because that's the, that's the place where I feel like they need the most help, of course, is wide receiver. But at the same time, uh, it, you, you know, you have to be able to take who's available to you, right? That's kind of a big part of it all is who's available. And at this stage, obviously there aren't a ton of guys that are available. Um, I do think that Michigan needs to kind of go over replacement to some degree here because you've got, um, you, you do have a bunch of guys who have departed the program. Now it was kind of a mass, it's not a mass exodus, but it was an an exodus mostly of linebackers at the, uh, at the end of the cycle here. You know, Beasley, Herring, Moore, and, uh, well, Herring's not a, a linebacker, but he left, and Samaj Bridgman. So you lost a lot of linebackers uh, all kind of at once, but you also lost a lot of wide receivers, even a couple that were like walk-on types, like Sam Starich was one of them, Darius Clemens, obviously, but you got Amarian Walker back in the fold. Uh, you lost uh, a couple guys who haven't really seen the field in uh, Iman Dennis, Carmelo English, and Christian Dixon. So I feel like you still need to find a way to kind of make that work and uh, to, tr- to try to make it work positionally, but it all kind of depends on the position. So that's the thing. But uh, Michigan is, like, they, they can't fall behind too much, right? I, I do believe, and this kind of is where the balance comes in, is that you, you're going to do things your way, leaders and best, to all of that. You know, you're not going to go for a bunch of reaches, whatever. So. A, you better be really good at the development game. And you also better be really good at recruitment if you're not going to be able to really scavenge through the transfer portal. Right now, recruiting is a little bit behind. I don't think anyone should panic as of yet because last year was something of an anomaly where they had their class wrapped up by this point pretty much. Granted, then the, the players that you all thought were coming in June, July ended up kind of falling off. Uh, then they lost commitments kind of even in August, into August. So um, 
You just kind of have to wait to see how June plays out. Michigan has historically done really well in June, and considering the offseason turmoil, yeah, it hasn't been pretty, especially for a defending national champion. You would hope that you would have so much buzz in that championship that it's like, and this is a bad example, but it's like when Kareem Walker committed to Ohio State at halftime. Now he flipped to Michigan, but at that time he was like the number one player in the country. It just it couldn't feel like it got any better from a perception perception standpoint. That's not really where Michigan is at this moment, right? So you hope that they can find their footing there. But you can you can be kind of bad at one, but not both. And I'm not I don't even think that Michigan's been bad. It's it's they already still kind of have the core of the roster. Right? Like, yeah, they lost guys to the draft. They lost some to the transfer portal. Only really two names out of the transfer portal do I feel hurt in DJ Waller and Keon Sapp at this juncture. Like down the line, yeah, maybe we'll be looking at Jeremiah Beasley and be like, that's a shame that they weren't able to retain a guy like him. But otherwise, it, they, they did a good job at kind of filling some of those positions that they needed. Two wide receivers, Amarion Walker, C.J. Charleston, I would like for them to go and get a, another guy if they could. Th- that Arizona State guy would be the one I'd be looking at. Um. They, they got another offensive lineman. Kind of feels like he might be the best guy that they've got. And then they went out and got uh, uh, Jay Sean Barham, who is like they think of as the first rounder. So they've done a really good job at being snipers here. But what they really need to do is just be a little bit more aggressive. I like the diamond in the rough idea because if you're getting a guy from a lower division, like that guy, you know, it's just the same as the getting going the JUCO route that we've seen the SEC schools do year in, year out. So as much as you're going to get here, the scoffing of, oh, they're going and getting CJ Charleston, Youngstown State, like what's that all about or whatever, or going and trying to get a uh, Suggs or any of those other guys. You know, we, we've seen over the years, I mean, heck, Sharon Moore was a <clears throat> junior college guy himself. So I'm kind of fine with that to some degree. But that doesn't mean that you just sit there and look at it and say, that is it that, you know, like we, we've got what, you know, we, we've done our sniper thing. We've got just a little bit of this team together, whatever. They do need to be more aggressive. I, but I don't think it's necessarily a situation where they are, uh, super behind the eight ball. Right. Cause you still have a Mason Graham, a Colston Loveland, a Kenneth Grant, a Donovan Edwards, a Will Johnson, right? Like you still have, an incredible, incredible team uh, that you can kind of rely on. But at the same time, uh, you'd like to see some of those blue chip names come along. Um, let's talk about some of those names. And then I do want to touch on Denard Robinson because we haven't done that. And so we're going to do that here in just a moment. But listen, there's a lots of different events that you're going to want to go to this summer, uh, whether it's Major League Baseball NBA, NHL playoffs are both in full swing. Guess who has you covered? It's game time. We talked about it during the NFL playoffs. Game time is also an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. If you're in Detroit, man, you're going to want to see those playoff pistons. Wait a second. No. Incorrect. (laughs) Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Uh, I think the coolest thing is the seat views. And honestly, like when you pull up the whole section of the whole, you go onto the app or the website, and you pull up the whole thing, you can sit there and look. And that was how when we were looking at Detroit Lions tickets, everyone was saying for the playoff games, it's 1000 to get in the door. I'm like, look, I found a seat right here on Air. So like I found a seat for $450. You can sit. I don't remember where it was, but it wasn't standing room only. It was a seat, I think, in one of the end zones for like 400 bucks. So that's why game time. And you, you could look at it and say, hey, uh, that's not a bad view. It's a great part of it. With all in pricing, it's got a toggle feature that shows the price up front total without any surprise fees at checkout. And there's the lowest price guarantee where game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Lots of great features to this system here. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off for your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute uh, tickets, lowest price guaranteed.
So yeah, this is definitely a rich get richer scenario. I feel like I've been saying the same thing over and over again in the last segment, but my math, like I said, the mastery of my English language isn't always great. I mean, if you're looking at the transfer portal, the people who are still available, uh, the, the, the looking at the 24 seven sports composite for the transfer portal. I don't know if it's a composite. It's just at least their rankings here. Top guy goes to Ohio State. The sixth guy goes to Ohio State. The ninth guy goes to Ohio State. They're all in. Uh, a lot of the, the usual suspects. Fifth guy goes to Oregon. Tenth guy goes to Oregon. Sixteenth guy goes to Oregon. Twenty-fifth guy goes to Oregon. That's what Michigan kind of looked like last year, remember? And obviously it paid off. Because you can't teach experience, but you also don't know how a guy's going to fit in. Michigan found the right culture, guys. That's also key to the whole thing, right? You can't just sit there and say, Walter Nolan is available. You have to go get him. Caden Proctor is available. You have to go get him. Look how that worked out for Iowa. You have to have the right culture guys as well. You have to get guys that are going to fit into the system, buy in, and all of that. That is just as important to it. But it's interesting because, yeah, not pretty much most everybody has been kind of picked over, right? So you don't have a ton of, of guys that are available at the appropriate positions. Looking at the wide receiver, you know, position, everyone's pretty much off the board as far as the top guys are concerned, right? Like, I'm just looking. Sam Brown is committed from Houston to Miami, but he has not enrolled. That's the top. We've got guys who are like Keandre Lambert Smith is committed to Auburn, but not enrolled. Like, for the most part, everyone is essentially committed, but not enrolled. There's not a lot of places that you can find a guy that you're looking for in the transfer portal at this stage. And that's been the case for a while now. So Michigan just kind of missed the window. And they knew that was going to happen, kind of, like having had conversations with some of the people in the recruiting department. Like, it's just not... It, you know, it wasn't a really good time to kind of go through with what we went through, right? So, yeah, there's going to be some issues as far as that's concerned. So, the good news is, is this team still feels really together. And I know there's a lot of talk of, like, this crazy drop-off going from this year to next year. And that might be true because right now you've got four guys that are first-round talent and maybe five, maybe six, right, depending on how things kind of play out for, uh, uh, through the year. Um, but... And then next year, you know, you're going to see another probably pretty big NFL draft class. And then beyond that, who knows, right? But if they kind of have things set and just at least get their ducks in a row for the next transfer portal cycle, and then they are quick to identify and make their pitch, then it isn't necessarily the death knell that it used to be. So that's the important thing is looking forward. For right now, it's fine. And if they don't get a Javier Suggs, JVR Suggs, however you say his name, Considering that's at a, not at a position to need, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, you want to be able to get a guy like that and just kind of fill out your depth. But if they don't, they've got other guys there that they can rely on. Uh, so that just kind of finishes us out there. Let's talk about uh, Denard Robinson. It is a shame to see him. Uh, if you didn't know, he's no longer with the program. Uh, that came first reported by Aaron McMahon at MLive. Um, it is a shame that that's how that went down. But as we talked about here on the show, it, it was necessary. Um, I know that there are people I've read some of the message board comments and things, and there's people that are saying like, oh, you, Michigan needed to give him help, not fire him. Uh, other people said, how do you know they're, they're not giving him help? We don't know. I had, haven't had any conversations uh, or anything uh, to kind of hear any more about it, but it is the right move. It is unfortunately the necessary move, right? Like if you want to talk about leaders and best and being above reproach and all of these things, unfortunately that comes with hard decisions like that. And I think that after you got rid of Greg Scruggs, I don't care that Denard Robinson is a favored son and someone that everyone has extremely fond memories of. When you do the same thing, you have to sit there and say, unfortunately, your favored nation status no longer exists. With, with you know, you commit the crime, you do the time type of thing, right? Like, it, it's, it's the same deal. So it's unfortunate, but I think that it's the right move because it also sends a message to your team, to your players, like, 
there are certain things we are willing to rehabilitate, and this isn't one of them. So be aware, you are not a sacred cow in the moment if you, have, uh, if you find yourself on that side of the law, if you find yourself drunk behind a wheel. It's just not going to happen. So it's a tough call for a first-year head coach to have to do that twice in a season, but it's the right call, and I commend Trone Moore for making it because much like Ward Manuel trying, having to get rid of Juwan Howard, it's, it's a tricky situation. And I know there's a lot of you out there that are, you know, seething <laughs> the fact that I just brought up Ward Manuel. Uh, but I mean, that's that's a tricky situation. He's a favored son. He he was a Fab Five member. He's, you know, he he's one of the goats when it comes to Michigan basketball. But at the same time, it might have taken a little bit longer than it probably should have. But that's what made it why it made it such a hard decision. I think because I think if it's just Jim Bob Smith, who previously was a, a coach at Providence, who's come over, it maybe that decision's a little bit easier. But when it's someone that everyone that is, was of age has fond memories of watching in a Michigan uniform, and then you have to let that guy go, it, it's it's a lot. Uh, it's an easier said than done decision. So it is a it is the right call uh, for Sharon. Uh, hopefully, Denard gets things fi- uh, fixed up, figured out, on his feet, goes and takes the right steps, rehabilitates his career, and, you know, maybe down the line he comes back. You know, I'm not talking like two months. I'm talking like several years. But figure things out. Get it right. And, uh, you know, don't get behind a wheel when, when you've been uh, drinking or uh, smoking or whatever it is. So. All right, that's going to do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow with the mailbag. Those are my famous last words because every time I call for a mailbag, I put the question out on Twitter and say it's going to be tomorrow. It's usually two, three, four days from now. But uh, God willing, the creek don't rise, as Jim Harbaugh says. That will be on Thursday. So get your questions in. We will talk to you then. Peace. Peace.